Some grim news from Israel. The Israeli military said yesterday that four more hostages who were abducted on October 7th had died months ago in Gaza. This announcement is likely to add pressure on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government to move forward with a ceasefire deal. Now, Netanyahu has been resisting accepting any deal that has been presented. Members of his far-right cabinet have been putting political pressure on Israel's leaders not to yield. Today, we're turning to one specific hostage story, the story of Romy Gonin. Her family says she was last heard from at 10.58 on Saturday morning of October 7th as she and her friends tried to escape the Hamas attack on the Supernova Music Festival in the desert. Romy's sister, Yarden, says that Romy had been on the phone with her family since about 6.30 a.m. when Hamas first began the attack. On October 7th at 10.15 a.m., Yarden says Romy took her, uh, told her mother that she had been shot and she was bleeding in a car. That car was later found, but it was empty. Here with us now is Romy's sister, Yarden. Thank you for joining Rising. We appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, it's, uh, we're very glad to have you here telling uh, your story. And of course, we uh, wish for your sister's uh, safe return. Can you, know, you walk us through, I'm sure this has been an unimaginable um, ordeal. Um, you know, what has it been like to not know, um, you know for, for certain whether a loved one is, is still alive? And how has that um, led you to you know, process the events of the last few months? I don't think I can explain the feeling of uncertainty and unknowing and everything that's going on in the past 242 days. A lot of people are asking me if uh, I got a phone call from Romy during that time. And obviously the answer is no, she's not held by a, a army group. It's a terror organization that just want to cause her and us harm. And the last conversation we had with her was with my mom. And the conversation ended at 10.58 after 10 minutes of only shooting, uh, bombing, and terrorists talking among themselves. And that's how the call ended. After a few days, we translated it. And they're talking about Omi, about the fact that even though they shot her, that she's alive and debating whether to take her or not. And then uh, deciding to kidnap her, and there were 18-year-old men. And this is the last time we heard her voice. And the last uh, sign of life we had is from the uh, November deal from the released hostages, that some of them were with Romy. And they told us horrifying things about the, the time that she was kidnapped, that the terrorist dragged her from her hair. She had curly hair, similar to mine, and they dragged her from it and then switching to her wounded arm like it's funny. And when they throw her inside their, their car, she lifts her head up to see what's going on and they one of them saw her, so he hit her with his weapon on her face and she blacked out. Like, this is how you treat people. This is how you treat women. And this is only the things that happened to my little sister on October 7th. And from then, we don't know what else they can do. It's the same terrorists that hold her, that are holding her right now. And we know from released hostages about abusing they were having, whether it was uh, mentally, physically, or sexually and that's just terrifying my sister is a young amazing woman and she just loved her life and she loved working with autistic children and she loved dancing she just went to a music festival you know to celebrate Gordon, can i can i ask you what your um well, you've heard from the Israeli government with respect to hostage negotiations. We've covered um, protests from hostage families who feel like Netanyahu isn't prioritizing the return of people's family members, especially given that your sister was injured. The 
need to get her back home quickly and get medical attention seems to be quite obvious. The former spokesperson for hostage families uh, gave an interview uh, about a month ago, uh, Heim Rubenstein, uh, saying that there is no doubt that Netanyahu is preventing a deal to release the abductees and said also, in retrospect, we learned that Hamas offered to immediately release all the abducted citizens if the IDF does not enter the Strip, but the government rejected that proposal. What do you make of how Netanyahu has been prioritizing the return of your sister and the other hostages? Because I'm not in the negotiation team and neither Chaim Rubinstein, uh, none of us knows what's really going on. All I can say is that none of us are doing enough to release them because they're not here. Not me, not my government, and neither the international community. We didn't hear almost anything from the women organizations that will condemn what Hamas did and still doing. And it's not that hard to condemn terror groups. And, you know, I can say a lot of things, but right now, if I'm looking at the present or the future, uh, we have an Israeli deal that sent to Hamas and we're now waiting for Hamas to make their own move and say yes to show the world and their own citizens that they really care about them and they want this ceasefire and to come true. And this is what I'm waiting for. This is the time to shine. If they will say no, we have a big problem here, not just in Israel, but the entire world, the entire free world is at risk because of because of a terror group, you know, that makes me crazy. People can say a lot of things about Israel and I don't, I, we can debate that for a long time, but why people are not condemning a terror group that made a horrible terror action on October 7th that murdered 200, 1,200 people that kidnapped almost 250. I mean, they're not good people, not for us, not for their own civilians, and not for the entire world. Does does the uh, does the Israeli authorities um, stay in regular or contact with you at any? Do you get any updates on the progress of uh, discussions or planning or thinking? Um, you know, the I mean, the IDF I, I think has ju justified part of its um, uh, entrance into Rafa, into Gaza on a, a sort of, you know, get back the hostages, free the hostages kind of thinking. Are you informed, are families of the hostages told at all about uh, the thinking of the government as it uh, pursues the actions it's it's taking? Or, you know, even for the, the safety of uh, w w what hostages who, you know, still live there who could be vulnerable in the event of, of, of bombings and that sort of thing. Are, are, you, are you kept in the loop at all? Um. That's a good question. And we have each family, we have a contact person that and uh, get in, touch, uh, in contact with us whenever he can and with whatever information he can give us. And he's really like a part of my family. He's doing anything for us and he's doing the best he can. Sometimes they update us and we appreciate it a lot. And sometimes they don't. And that's frustrating, but we also know that it's a top secret matter. So I don't know. I don't want to do anything that will harm my sister or any other hostage. And But with that said, I want to know as much detail as I can. So it's very, very complicated. And I can only trust them that they're doing anything they can to let us the the forest information they can. Netanyahu has rejected the proposal to have a full hostage exchange in exchange for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. How do you feel about that? Would you accept personally, would you prefer a, a, an immediate and permanent ceasefire if it meant that your sister and the other hostages could be returned immediately? Or do you kind of support Netanyahu's goal of wanting to, quote unquote, eliminate Hamas before hostages are exchanged? Let me ask you something else. Okay, of course, I'm, I'll say that, of course, I'm, I'm pro permanent ceasefire because it means that we will bring our loved ones homes, all of them, 
that if we won't give bring all of them home, so we didn't do anything. We just left Hamas what they wanted, and we didn't brought the hostages back. Just think about yourself being in one of the countries inside the U.S., being attacked from Mexico, let's say like that. Do you think that the United States Army or the the Biden administration or any other administration for that matter will be quiet until this terror group will be eliminated, that we will have this threat for the, the entire lives? Yeah, We're I mean, I, I think that's an interesting analogy. I don't think that we would ha endeavor to eliminate all Mexicans if that were to happen, right? I think that we've had I don't seven think months that of a going siege. To eliminate all Palestinians, but let's talk again about my sister, okay? Please. My sister is a woman. She's 23 years old. She's being held by a group of terrorists that, that can do anything, anything they want to her. You're a woman. You know how it feels like to feel unsafe to feel like a man can control you, to hug you or touch you in a way that you don't want to. But you will have your phone and you can call your mom or the police or tell someone to come rescue you and you still be at home. So when he will release you, maybe you can go home or go to complain. And she can't. Yeah, you're done. I think I the question is... do anything to help her. I think the question is, as so many other hostage families who've been protesting Netanyahu seem to believe that what would help their family members come home sooner is if Netanyahu would agree to a ceasefire and a hostage release deal to really prioritize what you're saying, prioritize getting your sister home where she can be safe and have the medical attention it seems that she very much needs. You're very right, but sometimes throughout those deals, we saw that Hamas wasn't agreeing anything at all. Right now, we have a new deal that the Israeli administration put on the table that Biden is vouching her this deal. And I'm really hopeful that Hamas will show the world that he cares about his own citizens and will say yes to this deal. Because if they say no, I, I'm really hopeful that anyone, everyone can see his, the true face of terror. And so that there have there no has question. been a, 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 a you know a temporary there was a temporary ceasefire uh, earlier in which some uh, hostages were uh, released in exchange for Palestinian prisoners, and there was an end to the fighting for a period um, uh, for for a few days. That was back in December, I think that was. Oh, um, November. Uh, November. Do you think uh, there is there an opportunity to have another one of those um, arrangements and then, you know, delay the kind of attempt to address the broader question of, you know, Israel, Israel's government wanting to well, get rid of of Hamas and, 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 you know, putting that further down down the, the path while the while more of the hostages and the Palestinian uh, prisoners are exchanged. I'm not sure what was your question with that said. Yeah, well, I'm would sure you support there's that the possibility happening? of that, but I'm not, I'm not sitting, I'm not a politician, you know, I'm yeah. not representing the Israeli government. I'm not representing anyone except myself, my sister, and the woman, women community, maybe yeah. around the world. I can't say that I'm representing any more of that. I don't know what's going on in their meeting of the cabinet. I don't know what is going on on the negotiation team. It's not my job to perform. My job is to take care of my sister and to show the world what is really going on right now. What is really going on to my sister? What has really gone... Uh, sorry. What really happened on October 7th I don't know if you know Zaka organization, but they have the worst pictures of what Hamas has done to the women during the October 7th attack. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, can... we are very familiar with Zaka, but regrettably, okay. the reporting has been roundly discredited by both Israeli and American media sources. So I really would like to bring this back to your sister specifically. And I, I want to ask you about what you make of new reports. I saw the pictures with my own eyes. And when you will have a sister in a terror organization's hand, you will know the feeling of terrifying every minute of every day, can't sleep at night, can't even drink a sip of water because I know that my sister is drinking salt water from the sea, that she's not getting food and the terrorist is eating in front of her, of her face. Yeah, hey, Erdin, I, I really hope your, your sister hand. does get w water and food, and I hope that, I, I'm sure you're aware of the ample reporting of Israel blocking aid, food, and water to Gaza in, in a way that is hurting both the people of Gaza know, and the hostages, of the, right? Most of the trucks are getting inside Gaza. I don't know if you saw, but Hamas is blocking them from them civilians. They're not giving their own civilians the humanitarian aid that everyone is so eager to give them. And I'm not against that. I'm a nurse in my profession. I really, truly believe that everyone should live in safety, in health. This is the, one of the biggest crises that we ever experienced here. But I'm really feeling that everyone is taking care of the Gaza civilians like they should. But what about the hostages? Why let's talk, no let's one's talk about how to get the hostages home. They, I no, agree. Please, let me finish. Why aren't the Red Cross is entering the hostages? Why aren't they giving them medications? My sister have a lot of chronic diseases. Why aren't she getting anything? And we know that they didn't got anything. Why aren't they getting what they deserve? The, the Times just reported this morning uh, that Biden said, quote, there is every reason for people to draw the conclusion that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is prolonging the war for his own political uh, self-preservation. Um, this is after Biden's speech at the end of last week was met with statements from Israeli government officials saying that he, there wasn't an agreement about this hostage deal on the part of Israel and that there was a gap between what uh, Biden represented and what they would agree to. And after months of Netanyahu and members of his administration saying that the goal was to eliminate Hamas and that he would not agree to a ceasefire and hostage ex exchange deal, into that happened. Now, this seems to be Joe Biden saying again that the what is obstructing the ceasefire process that could allow your sister to come home and get the food and get the medicine and get the care that she needs and to live in safety is being obstructed by Benjamin Netanyahu. Do you feel like he's putting his own personal political goals ahead of prioritizing hostage release? I really see that you want to talk political things and this is not my profession. I'm saying right now that we have an Israeli deal on the table and we're waiting for Hamas to say yes. Unfortunately, that we doesn't seem to be the case. I, I wish that it were, but unfortunately, that, that does, does not seem to be the case. Would you like to say anything this else that exactly we should know about your... This is exactly the case that even Biden told, said himself. This is what the Egyptian government said. This is what the Qatari said just today. And this is what my government said. Hamas also said that they're waiting, that they need to read the agreement and to decide whatever they want. I don't know, but what I'm getting is from the media, and I'm sure that you're getting it from the media itself, yourself because you're not in the negotiation team. So I'm here to talk about my sister. Please help me spread her story. Help me make people understand what she's going through as a woman in 2024. We are not 200 years ago. This is not okay that we have terror organization that controlling the free world and people in the West letting it happen and stay on the streets, killing the hostages now, or Israelis must die. What did I do wrong? What did my sister do did wrong? Nothing, nothing. We did nothing wrong. Well, this we are happening inside our own country. Yeah. And if, the world won't help us. We will see 9-11 the second time in the U.S. as well. But we can already see in the United States, in Michigan, 
rallies that calling death to America, not condemning terror organizations in Israel or any other place, in fact, is reflecting to your country as well. I'm just going to push so back against not- the implication that um, in Michigan, where which has the largest Muslim and Arab population in America, that there is any threat of terrorism from our own people. And I would like to clarify also that one of the rationale that was presented for 9-11 was discussed with America's support of Israel's continued occupation of uh, Palestine. So that's neither here nor there. I really do hope that Netanyahu agrees and Israel agrees to the ceasefire deal that could bring all the hostages, including your sister home. And I'm sure many people watching are praying for her safety. Thank you, me too. And I really hope that you specifically will believe women when they say that they got hurt. All right, thanks for joining. Stick around, more rising coming up next. Thank you.